Hello and welcome to our online worship for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. My name's Joe Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Bemminster team. It's really good to see you but oh boy is it hot. I'm a bit too uh, overwhelmed by the heat. I don't want to complain although this does sound a bit like a complaint but the sunshine's glorious and it's lovely to have summer but oh goodness when you've got to do a day's work it feels a bit overwhelming. Ha however I am very grateful for cold cool stone churches uh, there's about three weeks a year that they come into their own and we're in the midst of that season at the moment. Uh, it's been another busy week. It's always a busy week. Uh, been plenty going on. We've got we've had baptisms in the team this week. Uh, we've had uh, worship in our schools. We've been doing a bit of forward planning for next term, looking at collective worship and our ethos. We have the clergy day this week where all the clergy in the diocese get together at Bryanston School. Uh, and that's quite a big deal for us because it hasn't happened for a while since Covid and also it will be the first time the new Bishop of Salisbury has his whole diocese together. Uh, so no doubt we will hear a bit from him tomorrow. Uh, it's always good to see uh, friends and colleagues from across the diocese. But Covid is rearing its head again. Uh, today in Bemminster the pharmacy and the bakery were short staffed because of Covid. And I know a number of people who have been suffering. So if that's you, take care, stay safe, get well soon and uh, hopefully you'll be back in circulation in no time. Our liturgy today uh, from, for the fifth Sunday after Trinity is the liturgy we use at our family service in Solway Ash. We met last week, uh, we had a fabulous time exploring Sea Sunday and making boats and putting them in water and being in the wonderfully cared for churchyard. But we're using quite simple liturgy today uh, from our family service. So let us prepare to worship God. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. We sing our hymn.
we come to our prayers of penitence, beginning with a time of silence as we bring our sins before God. We are sorry that sometimes we fail to love you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are sorry for the times when we have not loved others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are sorry for the moments that we don't love ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, so that all believe that believe in him may not die, but have eternal life. Forgive each one of us our sins and bring us a new start with him. Amen. We pray the collect prayer for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen to our reading. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Sometimes you stumble across passages of scripture, uh, chapters of gospels, for example, that hold a number of wonderful stories. And Luke chapter 10 is no exception. Last week, we were exploring the story of the Good Samaritan, which we've also done in school this week. And thinking about compassion and being people of integrity and caring for others. And then today in our gospel reading, we hear about Jesus's friends, Mary and Martha. We don't know loads about them, particularly in Luke's gospel. Most of what we find out about Mary and Martha comes from John's gospel. But we understand that they were friends of Jesus, that they lived in Bethany, that they had a brother, Lazarus, and that probably it was Mary who anointed Jesus with perfume and it was their brother Lazarus who Jesus raised from the dead. We think, we suspect that they are probably the people that Jesus was able to kind of let his hair down with. They were friends and companions for him. And so perhaps, I guess, the first reflection on this story might be, who are the people who you really trust, who you can let your hair down with, but who also perhaps hold you accountable? I've just been to do a home communion in Broadwindsor House for uh, a member of our Burstock congregation who used to be church warden and we always enjoy a little bit of political discussion when we get together. We were reflecting on uh, the current joys and highs and lows in the government choosing a new leader and we talked a little bit about what we require from our our, uh, public leaders and perhaps we require them to be people of integrity. And Lionel and I were chatting about how we manage to keep our integrity when we hold power. And we decided that having people who held you accountable, friends who you were trustworthy with, but also who could knew how you very well and could be really honest with you is really important. 
And I wonder if Mary and Martha and Lazarus and Jesus had that relationship of deep intimacy, trust and accountability. I have a feeling they might have, because, of course, in this story today, we are a little bit of tension is revealed between the two sisters. Mary, who chooses to sit at Jesus's feet, a really significant place for a woman to be, because customarily in the Jewish faith in the first century, you sat at the feet of your teachers, your religious teachers, the rabbis. And so it's quite OK and quite normal for us to see Jesus in that role as a teacher. But what's not OK is to see a woman sitting at his feet because it was men who learnt at the feet of their religious leaders, not women. So Mary is occupying an unusual place, a place of honour at Jesus's feet and a place that he affirms her in. So we can say firmly, I think, from this story that Jesus affirms women's learning and women's ministry and women's understanding of matters of faith. But of course, Mary's position draws a little bit of criticism from Martha. I wonder why she's so fed up. Is it just because she feels she's being let down and she's having to do all the work on her own? Maybe she feels that Mary's position is a bit scandalous, that actually she doesn't want her sister to be occupying that bold space. She'd rather she uh, protected her perhaps from the scandal that might ensue. Maybe she's jealous. Maybe she feels it's unfair that Mary gets that place of honour. Perhaps she'd like to join Mary at Jesus's feet too. We explored this story recently in worship with children. We were thinking about hospitality and welcome and the barriers that get in the way of us offering hospitality and welcome. And we use this story because, of course, there's a barrier for Martha joining in and that barrier is the stuff that she does. And I asked the children, you know, who removes the barriers in this story? And they quickly identified it was Jesus removing the barrier to Mary sitting at his feet. But one of them went a step further and said, actually, Jesus could really easily remove the barrier that stops Martha joining Mary on the floor, the stuff that she has to do by, and their suggestion was, all three of them get up and do the chores together. Then they can all sit down and talk about matters of faith. I liked that child's style. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, why shouldn't Jesus get up and help Mary and Martha together? That would have been a great end of that story. But Jesus says to Mary and what well, says to Martha that she's distracted by many things. And I think that can be said of all of us, that much of the world of the stuff of life can get in the way. And that actually Mary has managed to navigate past those distractions and focus on the most important thing, which is learning from Jesus and being part of his kingdom. And I don't really want to sort of say that Mary's right or Martha's wrong. I don't want to set it up as division. Actually, what I want to see is both sisters at the feet of Jesus, both sisters enjoying that place of honour and learning both sisters being welcome in that space and both sisters having that experience of being with Jesus, of knowing his love and his teaching and his presence in their lives, not letting the stuff of life get in the way, not being distracted by other things. So I hope that that's given you perhaps some things to ponder in your own life today. What distracts you? What gets in the way? of being with God. Do you feel welcome in that space of just dwelling with Christ? What might make you feel more welcome? What are the barriers that get in the way from a deeper relationship with Jesus perhaps for you? What's the most important things in your life? What do you really value? How might you realign your values with Jesus's values? So dwell with him today, sit at his feet, read that story again perhaps for yourself and spend time with your Lord, your saviour and your friend. Amen. We affirm our faith and today we use the promises used in the baptism service. 
Do you believe and trust in God the Father, a source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord, you are always there for us, calling us to share your peace and joy. You are always there calling us to worship and celebrate your glory. You are always there meeting us, holding us, challenging us and sharing our lives. You are there when we need you and when we turn our backs on you. Even when we least expect it, Lord, you are always there. So remind us of the path we have chosen, particularly when we forget you in the busyness of the day or are tempted to wander from you or don't listen to you. Keep us obedient to your word and draw us close. Amen. Lord, you have chosen men and women to serve you in the ministry of your church and have given them a perfect example in the person of your son. Pour your blessings on them and particularly on our clergy here, David, Joe and Fiona, and also our partner priests. We pray for all the churches in the team and for the work and witness of our Christian friends there. We ask that you will draw all Christians in this area into a deeper sense of being one in Christ as we seek to meet the needs of our community in our love for others and our life together. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the love and commission that Jesus showed to his disciples and followers. So we pray for those we love, the special people you have given us, wherever they may be. We pray for our friends, the close ones, and those we sometimes forget, those with a special problem, and those who need you. We thank you for each of them and for what they give to us. And as the end of the summer term approaches, we ask you to bless our schools as they break for the holidays. We pray for rest and rejuvenation for weary teachers, for staff leaving, for year six leavers, and for those whose schooling has now ended as they move on to the next stage of their lives. We hold these special people in our hearts now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our nation in these uncertain times that the values of your gospel may prevail and that the values of justice, fair representation, concern for the weak, and equal opportunity for every person may be upheld. Look too on your world, where so many communities are experiencing poverty, disease, lack of food and water, flooding, leaders seeking power and showing no respect for human rights often through slaughter and intoxication of war. We pray that your light will shine in these dark places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray you will turn your healing love on those who are sick and in pain. 
we have on our hearts, some known to us individually and some known in our church families. Let us hold in the silence of our hearts those we know in any kind of need. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember before you those who have died recently and in particular, particular the Smith family. We hold Celia to you especially and thank you for all Colin did for St Mary's Church in Beminster and the community for so many years. Comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones and give them the peace which passes all understanding and allow them to know that neither life nor death can separate them from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Father, as we leave your house to start a new week, help us both to be able to serve others and to listen to you. We ask that in all we do, we may more walk more closely with you at our side, safe in the knowledge that your love and care knows no bounds. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we share in a Celtic blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. Stay safe, stay cool, take care and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>